special meeting of the Escondido Library Board of Trustees. We're started. Started. Okay, great. So it looks like um, for today we have a bit on the schedule. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the agenda. All right, um, would anyone like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting? Great. So Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, no worries. And as a reminder, I apologize. Uh, the, right now, the voting system isn't working because of the uh, socially distanced, so we'll just do a hand vote or a voice vote, whatever you prefer. <laughs> okay. And then, all in favor? Aye. Motion approved 4 0. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, the next thing on the agenda is sorry, Dara, did you have something? Okay. Do you mind turning on your uh, right. advance? Oh, you don't have the list in advance of the agenda items. So right. they are just there. They're just so there. I apologize. For no, it's okay. I got it. Okay, cool. So I think um, I'll start then with um, just an update on our strategic plan. Uh, so we released the survey for the strategic plan on October 17th and have had um, one outreach event so far at the Escondido um, Great, what was that? The Grape Day Festival? What wasn't the Grape Day Festival? Go ahead. Okay, we had the uh, first outreach on the 17th, Sunday the 17th at the Grand Avenue There Festival. we go, Grand so, Avenue. I was there. I okay. just forgot the yes. name of the... And yeah. then we've had two uh, uh, farmer's markets and one Halloween thing. Awesome. Yeah, Great. so far. Okay. And um, I did one of the Rotary Clubs this morning. Perfect. And maybe some other people have been thussed up, but that's what, that's what I know of so far. Okay, so... Um, it would be great if uh, you could take the survey and then um, distribute it to the folks that you know in the community. Um, I think that's all we're really asking. Are there any uh, questions about that? Do you, do you, or any more comments? Uh, I, I'm looking for uh, 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 Debbie's email uh, survey outreach. This is as of? November 1st, it was 521. Yeah. Okay, what are we at That's now? about half of what our, we, we usually get. We have had some complications with our Facebook page okay. and being able to put links into our post. We're limited oh. right now to just images. So when the library gets out of Facebook jail, we'll do a, another big social media post um, or, or try and push it out. We've been posting about it, but it's unfortunate you can't just click and go directly to the survey. So we might end up extending the time of the survey a bit. Um, and we've been to multiple farmers markets. I don't know how many you said three. And then um, a pumpkin patch event. The And we have a, um, a swap meet coming up in November. So November 13th, we're sending um, some staff over to that so we're hoping to get a big drive and maybe a uptick in Great. especially spanish surveys yeah how many do you know what the breakout is uh, yeah i don't want to tell you okay um, no i'm just kidding it's 521 okay and we only have um was it 8 or 11 i think it was 11 or 12 yeah 11 or 12 that were in spanish okay yeah but the 521 were english yeah wow okay Okay, great. Anything? No? Comments? Okay. Is, is there a chance, you know, our literacy group, uh, those people have, the people in charge, they have, a, they have quite a connection to the community. Is yeah. there any chance they could push it a little bit for us? They, yes, they are. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and they're also um, at least one, I think, I think Sheila is participating in our swap meet. Mm -hmm. One other thing, uh, uh, according to uh, Debbie Joy, the uh, amount of completed surveys we have, um, it's, uh, it's statistically good. Okay, okay we're, we're in good shape. We're, but, uh, you know, doubling up would, on that number would be uh, where we want to go. Definitely. Okay, great. Well, we're about halfway through, so hopefully we can drum up the more, uh, more 
people to take it. Okay, um, well, moving on to the next agenda item. Um, I had requested uh, feedback on or information on if we've received feedback about the library hours. So I don't know if Katie told you, but we had a conversation at the festival on that Sunday. An individual came up and kind of expressed, you know, that they liked the Sunday hours. So I was wondering if you could provide some input on that, Dara. Okay. Um, so we looked at February 2020, since that was the last normal month we had. Um, and then we compared it to September 2021 of this year. And we specifically looked at the visits between 5 to 7 of February and then looked at those visits from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, in September of this year. We had an increase in about five, of about 5%, um, but until we can do in-person programming, which officially starts this month, uh, we, I don't think we're going to see a full read on the potential increase in those hours. Um, but we'll have a full two months when we go to review next time. Um, as far as patrons in the building, we haven't gotten any you know, complaints about being closed on Sunday or anything. Uh, in fact, we've gotten some positive feedback from students that have been coming in and using our study carols and uh, quiet study space in the evening because San Marcos closes at four. They've been visiting us and staying until clo close at eight o'clock. And we've also had a couple parents in the uh, youth services area uh, talk to staff and say it's been great that they actually have time to bring the kids in for assignments after work where when they when the close was at seven it was just a little too early to be able to do that just some background information so the um, individual who approached us uh, has small children and um, said that Sunday was really another day for him to visit the library with his kids because the um, longer hours during the week um, extend past uh, their bedtime so he's not able to use the extended hours during the week so just something to keep in mind um, but I'm looking forward to that data uh, when we have it to, to see and then um, we can make a have another discussion probably about hours okay how long how long also has the uh, pioneer room been closed well, it's open three days a week. Has that been for a long time? Yeah, we actually extended the Pioneer Room hours when we reopened um, post-COVID. Uh, and there's two evenings now that it's, um, it's open Tuesday and Thursday evening and then Saturday afternoon. So it gave people uh, a chance that to come in and do research that may work or have other obligations, whereas previously, it was very limited as far as the time to come in. And we still welcome appointments, too, for people who can't make it into those limited hours. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. OK, great. Uh, Dara, do you want to tell us about the interior design plans? Uh, sure. There's. It's still very early. OK. Um, Catherine vis visited the library end of August. Um, she's in the process of or she has created some early design and cost estimates. Um, the city has used that as part of um, their preliminary application for the infrastructure grant. So that's really all I can share at this point um, as we have um, a better idea of whether or not this is going to be a project to move forward. Um, we'll have more to share. Okay, great. So what were some of the things that you um, talked to her about with regard to like what the design looks like? It predominantly based on our strategic plan, uh, which talked about having more meeting rooms, um, better lines of sight, shorter shelving, um, so and better program, more programming space. Mm -hmm. What was the other one? Study rooms. Oh, yes, study rooms. That's a big because study rooms are a big um, request and something people are often looking for. And right now we're limited to three study carols on the second floor. Okay. As far as like an individual quiet space. Right. Interesting. And do you know what like the preliminary cost estimates were? I. I okay. All right.
you know, I don't know whether this fits into this, but are we ever <coughs> planning to open the Turrentine room again? Are we? <laughs> because I know it used to get quite a bit of community use, and uh, and I like that because it could brought people to the library, and so that was just a question. Sorry. So the Turrentine room is currently only being used by staff for programming. Um, we are currently working on the back end of the software to get it ready for patrons to be able to reserve the room for their own programs. Um, the city of Escondido recently updated the... <coughs> the fees associated with rental across the entire city. So I've got that information from our liaison at the city. I've input that into the system. There's just a couple of things as far as um, like the cleaning deposit and other things that we're waiting to be functional. Um, and then we'll begin testing and the plan is to go live in January of 22. Good, that's really good to hear. Thank you very much, Katie. Yeah. Okay, business partnerships. Okay, so I gave you all a sheet of um, with adult services on one side and youth service partnerships on the other side. Um, you can see it's pretty extensive. Youth services is still partnering with the Children's Discovery Museum, of course the Escondido Unified School District um, and High School District. Uh, we are working with San Diego River Park Rangers for um, programming, the, and that's a new program that's been well received where we talk about um, community hikes and promote our parks as well as try and incorporate story times. Um, and actually our Escondido Park Rangers are starting as a result of that program to work with us as well. So um, they're, it's a great cross collaboration. Um, our 501 or 501st Legion, the Star Wars cosplayers, are another group that we work with. Um, they'll be um, out in May, of course, for May the 4th. Um, Rebel Legion is similar to that, as is Mando Mercs. Uh, we still partner regularly with the Grand Tea Room for our yearly etiquette class for kids. Um, Love on a Leash. Uh, volunteers um, bring the uh, or volunteers bring the dogs in for the kids to read to. Um, Eco Vivarium, they provide um, volunteers and you can read to uh, bearded dragons. Rock on Pizza is a local business that's provided us with special coupons and pizza for various uh, youth services programming. And currently, our In and Out Cover to Cover Book Club is. Um, it provides gift certificates for a free hamburger or cheeseburger if, a, if kids read five books. And my last number on that was 241 participants, so that's a good one. Um, oh, you know what? He left off uh, Cal State San Marcos. We have a STEM program we work with them on. And um, we even just had our first back in person program for that. And these are ones that we previously had and we have to get back up and running post-COVID and that San Diego, San Diego Council on Literacy, John Paul the Great, and then California State Library Literacy Services. And that's just youth services. So for adult services, um, actually, well, I didn't think to do that. Um, can I reflect my screen? Do you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to do it? Yeah, I can do it. Okay. Um, so we'll just pull up our uh, Read Local, Shop Local partners. They're on our website, so they're easier to see. Um, there's Art Hatch Escape, Burger Bench, Clue Avenue, Cute Cakes, Daydream, um, also Eco Vivarium, uh, The Grand Tea Room, Jimbo's, Kettle Coffee and Tea, Patio Playhouse, The Persian Cultural Center, Printing Solutions, Rock on Pizza, um, Sip Wine and Beer, Stone and Glass, and Sunnyside Up Kitchen. And we're planning to add um, comics and stuff and Battle Mage Brewing um, after the pandemic. So we'll, you'll see an uptick in new partners after the first of the year. 
And then we also work um, with Magic, and uh, there's we listed all of the partnerships that are part of that collaborative. Great. I, uh, I had the um, president of the Chamber of Commerce approach me at the uh, Grand Avenue Festival, wanting to set up a time with me to discuss like um, more or whatever other partnerships we can pursue. Uh, so I was going to meet with him probably later this month. Um, is that something you'd be interested in joining me for, Dara? Absolutely. Okay, great. Or if you can just send me the date, I'll yeah. be happy to attend. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Any questions from anyone? Comments? Uh, well, I think it's great that we're partnering with so many businesses on Grand Avenue specifically. Um, I would be interested in seeing, you know, what else we can do outside of just like the very most very local um, area, like um, getting out and about too. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that meeting and for you to join me. Okay, great. Uh, John. Okay, uh, I actually went out and bought a uh, used handbook and I have another one on order that lists for 150 and I'm buying it used for 17 and change. Uh, what I'm finding out is, unless it's very well hidden, California, the state of, does not have a um, library trustee handbook. Other states do. Uh, after reading this one, I guess I need to reserve judgment till I take a look at the other one, which is uh, a lot more comprehensive, I think. Uh, I'm not sure we need one, uh, but uh, I'd like to take a look at the other one, and I, I, I'd like to get everybody's input on this, but it seems to me we could use at least uh, a checklist, if you will, or, or something like that for new trustees uh, to make sure that they've covered all the things that need to be covered, because uh, when a new trustee comes in, we could very well have a new president, new secretary, and uh, there may be assumptions on what they already know uh, and that, you know, like the bylaws, uh, attachment A on the LS and S contract. I mean, these are all things that, that the uh, trustees should be aware of, um, and probably a lot more. So uh, what I'd like to propose is that all of us just write down what you think a new trustee should cover. What, what were you missing when you came on board? And uh, we can uh, maybe come up with a list, uh, take a look at it, see if it works out, and uh, make that something that uh, either the president or the secretary, you know, for, for, that takes over the April of the year, uh, would be responsible for making sure that a new trustee, if we had one, uh, would be uh, uh, would have to uh, you know just check out and go through that you know you've, you've read this, you've seen that, you've talked to these people that just so that they're familiar with the job and familiar with the people that we're working with. That's that's my thoughts. I agree with you, John. Uh, I would hope that this wouldn't be voluminous where people. Just it looks good, but nobody uses it. Exactly. I think the simpler and the most uh, helpful will be something that just the basics, kind of like you've just talked about, and it would be helpful to new people coming on. Yeah, and maybe a couple of years. You know, if if <clears throat> if you were we're up we're up next April or right. March, I guess it is. Uh, you know, if we choose not to throw our hat in the ring again, or or we end up one way or another with new trustees for other reasons during the, the period. It'd be nice to have something, but uh, it's, we certainly aren't necessarily have to be in a rush to put this together. Uh, but um, do you use SharePoint at all? Like, is the is the um, Escondido Library Board of Trustees like we have a, a site right or a page? 
<clears throat> Does that have any like back end SharePoint that we might be able? No. Okay. Here, look at me. Like, definitely not. Okay. No. And I think when they updated the bylaws, it was very minimal uh, okay. verbiage based on LSNS you know, yeah. coming on board. Right. Um, so, really, I think that could be reviewed as well as I think. I will reach out to other libraries to see who has a handbook, maybe yeah. just to use it as a idea brainstorming activity or maybe a template if we really liked it. But I think this is a great idea. Yeah. Well, I, I totally agree with what Ron said. If we come up with some, uh, some voluminous um, thing that has maybe 30 or 40 pages in it of things to do, it'll, it'll never be used, uh, unfortunately, but it, yeah. it wouldn't be used. So, so my thought was more along the lines of like a Google Drive um, space that we could put our materials into. So that way it's like easily accessible and shareable to future trustee members. And then we have documents, you know, that establish um, like, for example, the strategic planning committee, right? We could throw all of the documents from our committee in or into that um, drive, and that way people have a historical knowledge of what we have done. Um, because like you said, John, if you know both of us end up not you know, continuing next year, like then that kind of becomes like this um, fl influx, right? And so we wanna make sure that we're setting up whoever does come on board for success in that way. Um, I think that we should try to make it as digital as possible just with how things are going. I don't know why we would need a physical handbook. And that way um, it's an established uh, amount, like the information is established online and accessible to trustees. But are you, do you have in mind more like an archives of things that have been done? Or because I think John's talking more about like a handbook, like orientation handbook and right. handbook as to what the library trustees board is and what, what, what they do? Well, I think you could incorporate an archive into your Google Drive. So you could have the bylaws. That, I mean, we all, I got a handbook from the city when, when I joined the board. Mm -hmm. um, but I think from like a more, if we're going to think about, you know, carrying the knowledge into the future that we have uh, developed today, um, and having, you know, background information available, putting it all into a Google Drive would, I think, be the best way to do it, as opposed to just, you know, collecting the bylaws and the attachment A of the LSNS contract. You, you're still talking more like a reference point than, both. than the handbook. Yeah. yeah, both. So the drive would act as potentially the workspace for the, for the um, board moving forward. So it would include all of the uh, archive material, all of the bylaws and everything, and then, you know, it can be added to in the future. Well, Ron shared with me a handbook that he was uh, given when he started as a trustee. Oh, my goodness. It's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. I, think, uh, I think people who have not been on boards, at least when I had board members come into the school district, People need to understand a couple of things. One is the Brown Act, yes. which is very critical. Yes, absolutely. Another is the fact that what we called boardmanship and the fact that uh, people don't have individual powers that are board members. Mm -hmm. It's the board that has the power. Uh, just some of those little basics and like yeah. a paragraph would be plenty, but it would help people. And yeah. Particularly the Brown Act because you can't, you can't do certain things that maybe you did, if you haven't been on a board, you wouldn't know that. Right. Yeah, I think when, when we came on board, the Brown Act was pretty well covered in the... Uh, oh, we got a lot of... Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but not probably not so much in, in previous... Uh, but I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, there, there's probably something that each of us, um, uh, over time, if you think about it, would say, you know, I wish I would have known this when I first started this job. Yeah. And I think those types of things, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I would love to have it all on one page, okay? It's like, mm -hmm. it's like a checklist, mm -hmm. and, and some officer of the board would be responsible for making sure that the new trustee, uh, you know, uh, had a chance to read, or if, it, if, it, if, it, if it, somebody we wanted them to meet, some, some entity, yeah. make sure they had a great tour of the library and, and knew how Polaris worked, that type of thing. 
Yeah, and thinking about the Brown Act, uh, Google Drive space probably is a little off limits. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Maybe. Okay. Well, John, do you want us to come prepared next time with um, things we think should be on the list? Okay. Well, I'm, I would depend on all of us to input. Just send me an email with even if it's just one thing. This is what I think a new trustee needs to be aware of or, need, or, or the people they need to meet with so they can better understand their responsibilities. That type of thing. And I'll just put them together and we'll go over them next time. Great. Thanks for bringing that up, John. Sure. All right, Dara, do you want to give your report? Sure. So September was the first month where we had uh, in-person programming, at least in new services. Um, so our all-inclusive art club actually had 33 attendees. Um, and we over the course of two baby lap sets, we had 33. Um, Baby's story time had 20 attendees. Pause for reading had 42. Uh, two Knights Realm chess clubs had 42 attendees. And one G-rated book club had eight. Teen book club had eight. And Teen Tastic Fun Time <clears throat> had 15. And Teens on the Go movies had 11, which um, I thought was pretty great for our first month back with actual people in the building. People seemed happy about it. Um, the parents were very excited. Our story times were spaced in family pods with masks. Um, our adult services hosted the annual succulent swap. Um, that was outside and had 106 attendees. Wow. They had a movie matinee, which only had seven. Um, other programming included our hybrid programs, which was Escondido's Writers Group, 19 in person and 13 on Zoom, and two um, San, Di San Diego uh, Comic-Con book club with five in person and 19 online. Uh, we've added a new librarian, Catherine Colvin. She just started in adult services. Um, the library mural is nearing completion. The artist um, requested a slight extension. We had some rain. Um, plus, um, when she first started, the building was absorbing paint at a much faster rate than she anticipated. So um, it was a little more time consuming than originally thought, but she plans to wrap up her work no later than November 13th. Um, additionally, I, in October, we had our um, not so spooky story time. And we had, um, I, th I think 142 people turn out for that. And for um, Diaz de la Morte, we had 132. So some pretty good turnout there. Would you explain the decrease from September and August of circulation um, due to summer being over? Yeah, I will say typically August is always a slump. Okay. Um, and I mean, it looks like it's really great. 42,393 versus... Okay, where are we looking? Making my stats. Oh, okay, let me do your stats. Um, you know, it's all I can, I, I'm guessing, but also back to schools right. seems to pull um, some folks away. But usually, end of August, early September on any given year seems to slow us to slow down a little bit. Okay. Um, did we have, and we only have one day closed in September, so I don't think that that's enough to contribute. But I, I can't say for okay. certain. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm noticing wireless sessions are growing every month. Any, you want to add any color to that? Yeah, so I think, I think one of the things you can see um, from some of the numbers is our computer use was a little bit down in September, um, but it was 
pretty close to what it was in July. And I think what happened was, you know, in mid-July, we go to being fully open. So we've removed, we've added back all the seating. We've removed the time restrictions in the building. Um, and so we're having more people spending more time in the building, either on their own computers or using ours. Um, the September wireless stats, I think it's definitely due to the fact that more people are back in school, usually for universities and some of the high schools. School either starts in very end of August, beginning of September, so you probably have way more students in utilizing our wireless for their homework. Um, and just adding to what Dara said about kind of the ups and downs of between August and September, um, August was our first month back completely open. I think, and so July is gonna be lower just because we were still at limited capacity for half the month. Um, August is the end of summer reading. People are like finishing that program up. So you've still got people checking stuff out at the very beginning of the month. Um, and then September, like she said, we're back in school. So you've got less of the younger kids, which historically and pretty consistently across the board, our highest levels of circulation are children's materials because kids are reading like stacks of 20 picture books or easy readers and so when you factor in that most parents aren't taking their kids in as often because they're back in school and the kids are reading for school not for fun as much you're going to have a little bit drop in circulation I'm trying to see Okay, I think the next item is to just go around the room and uh, give an update or share something about the library. Merrick, would you like to start? Uh, a few weeks ago, I went on Saturday morning with my uh, biggest fan to the library and it happened to be um, Star Wars Day. So we got lucky twice there. <laughs> So we had a lot of fun, and uh, you guys are doing a great job for doing that. I saw a lot of uh, Star Wars figures. Some of them I didn't even know who they are, but he knew. So that was, that was good enough for us. So thank you, and, and uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Ron? Well, I, uh, I w actually was at the library today, but uh, I really want to commend you on the... Uh, the mural that's going in. I, I think that's really going to enhance things about the library and the dist uh, uh, in town. It's good for pe a lot of people travel that road. And so uh, I, I saw her up on a scaffold and uh, it's, it's really, I, I really like that. Uh, I was in the library several times this month and uh, I'm, I can continue to be amazed at how many people are using it so effectively. I mean, it looks like a college library. The people are in there. Uh, there was 18 computers. Uh, I think we had seven people on it at this time. Then back in the corner in the teen section, lots of people were studying back there. Uh, and so it, it really looks like a very quality place to go and study. So I, I think that uh, I think that's good. And I'm anxious to see how you are going to re rearrange that. <laughs> you too. <laughs> you too. <laughs> anyway, thank you. John? Well, other than the normal uh, audio books, et cetera, uh, <clears throat> that I normally check out, um, I, uh, I think uh, we had an interesting time uh, after the first uh, uh, farmers market. Um, I'm not I'm not sure what you what was used as enticement for the second one to uh, to get people to come up to the uh, up to the table. Candy. Candy. Did it work? I think so. <laughs> okay. Because we didn't have anything, and they 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 kind of unless they you know I've, I've got some people that I knew to come over. Uh, uh, they they kind of looked at you and said, what, what are you trying to do? You don't have anything to sell there. What are you trying to do? So, so you ha had to get their attention and start the spiel, and then that was okay. But uh, ha having a uh, some type of lead-in like that was would be useful, yeah. 
Well, we used pencils, which worked really well at the Grand Avenue Festival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, Katie and I think it was April. Um, they did a great job. Uh, it was the first time I really got to see like an outreach event. And I thought you guys just did great. We had a patron come up and most of the time, like, um, if they loved the library, they didn't want to take the survey, (laughs) right? Because they didn't, they didn't have anything that they wanted to change. But, um, we did get to speak to one individual who says he's in the library every day and he has used like the resume services and everything that you provide. And, um, he was just very profusive about how thankful he was and how great our library is. So Mm. that was really great. Okay. Well, great. Um, I, If there's nothing else, there's nothing else, right? Okay, good. Um, I will adjourn our um, Board of Trustees meeting. Adjourned.